and Carrier at 647 Cool. It's 747. Let's go to the KUAM new News of Zoom Room where we had a mini oversight hearing with Dave De La Sola. And now let's do a little mini session with um, Senators Kelly Marsh, Titano, and uh, she's the Assistant Majority Leader. And we have Minority Leader uh, Senator Tello Tidegui. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. Long time no see. Yeah, uh, there was an election and everything. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. I think the last time uh, I was on air was around 2.30 in the morning uh, on right. the post uh, from the election all the way to like 5.30 or right. 6 o'clock right. was the last time. And Senator Kelly, I know you joined us on election uh, morning. I, I know a lot of people, uh, a after having seen the results from that election, a lot of people would have just not shown up, but you did. And I, I wanted to thank you because I didn't get a chance to, but I wanted to thank you for that um, opportunity to talk with you on what I'm sure was a pretty emotional morning for you. Well, you know, I, I always appreciate the opportunity to come on here and talk a little bit. So um, I appreciate you guys right back. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we'll just start with um, something you might not have appreciated. But uh, one thing you both have in common is you both got a bill vetoed by the governor. Um, and so what, I guess we'll just start there. Uh, just tell us which bills and your reaction. Uh, go ahead, Senator Kelly. Well, yeah, you know, we um, we're, we're part of a uh, a list of uh, bills that have been vetoed this term, and so it's it's not the first time. And I think we both put our bills forward because we were really thinking about the community of Guam and what was going to be good for it. So, um, yeah. We both put a lot of uh, hard work into this, a lot of thought into this, and uh, listened to the community about these issues. And um, for for me, uh, you guys know that I care a lot about uh, the sustainability of our island, and I'm constantly looking for ways that we can be ensuring that we're going in a sustainable direction. And that includes the economy, which I had talked about recently that one of the bills that I have uh, going forward, I was hoping was gonna be this session, but I guess it will have to be next, is my Interregional Commerce Commission um, to really build our economy on more sustainable principles as we're diversifying. So it's one of many things that I've looked at to, to try to have those elements here for our community to just put us forward in the, the right direction. Right on. Senator Tello, uh, yours, I know, had something to do with the government uh, claims the uh, act or, and hasn't been updated in, what, like 40 years? So that got shot down. What's your reaction to that? Well, in shock. <laughs> I was totally shocked. And um, I had, um, counting myself, about nine co-sponsors. And I had uh, three co-sponsors at the very beginning um, when I introduced the bill. And one of them was, uh, thank you, Senator Kelly Marsh, uh, for being a co-sponsor of that bill. I think she was my only Democrat <laughs> on that uh, bill that was co-sponsored. I greatly appreciate it. And um, the bill is is just straightforward. You know, after 40 years, the government hasn't increased uh, the cap of liability, limits of liability on the Government Claims Act. Um, you know, wrongful death has been at $100,000 for almost 40 years you know, uh, $300,000 for um, for any tort action after that. I mean, that's a, a long time considering um, inflation. Um, I mean, we even increased minimum wage, you know, sooner than 40 years, you know. And so it was it was just a bit of a shock, you know, but I'm, I'm grateful after the, um, before putting it into the voting file, um, I was able to get additional co-sponsors who believed in the same uh, perspective. You know, I think it, so it was a total of nine, nine co-sponsors. So I'm hoping to get one more that was not a co-sponsor so that uh, we can attempt an override in this, se in this session. Um, I'm just really shocked because it's, for a lot of people, this was a no-brainer. You know, it was needed. Uh, we didn't, and this is another thing, the veto message, I believe, that the governor put out that was that it's going to cost the government more money. Um, 
number one, the bill does not uh, appropriate additional money. What happens is uh, during the budget season, every year the, the uh, legislature uh, puts funding into the Guam Claims Fund. And within that year, if it's all expended, then that's it. Then we have to wait until the following year uh, to make whole anybody who did not get paid out. Um, and this is a responsibility of the government, like anything. I mean, if you walk into a store, slip and fall, and, and um, it was not your fault, it was the negligence of the, the store owner, then we have the right to sue them. So why is it that the government of Guam doesn't hold that same type of liability uh, toward anybody? And it, it, it's just not right. So um, again, this just increases it. And the increase was to uh, wrongful death to 200,000. For wrongful death, and the other one was uh, to five hundred thousand. And believe it or not, I mean, this is like the lowest of even states that have a uh, one no cap, no cap to their liability on some of them. Uh, majority of them are up to one million dollars. You know, so we basically gradually brought it up to a point that um, I think that is doable at this point, and hopefully we don't wait another 40 years to adjust uh, this liability um, uh, Government of Guam Claims Act because the people of Guam it, incur expenses that are much higher than it was even 10 years ago. So um, I think, you know, over time, it, it's just, how would I say, um, I'm just shocked to tell you the truth. So, so many other people are just shocked about it, but um, we need to be upfront with the people of Guam and make them try to make them whole. But yeah, I'm kind of lost for words. Was I, did I sound like I was lost for words? Probably no, you not, sounded right? all right. I would, <laughs> I would have gaveled you if you did. Uh, but you know, there was a, a in session yesterday, I uh, noticed that you kind of took the floor about this. Um, a uh, bill that would prevent, I think it's a Mary Torres bill that would prevent uh, the Civil Service uh, Commission from auditing personnel actions after an employee has been on the payroll for six wow. months. Yeah, what what was that about, Senator? Oh, wow. Okay, that's that's ironic because uh, Senator Marsh and I were just talking about that in the parking lot. Oh, as hey, we were whoa, leaving. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a big issue with this bill, you know. It's like um, trying to... Uh, legitimize everything that all directors have done in the past that were wrong, <laughs> you know, and making it legal now or like it's supposed to happen. No, not, not at all. Um, my biggest pet peeve, and I think uh, uh, Senator Marshall, I'll let her take it after this, was is just the uh, issue about allowing after six months, if somebody has been um, on probation, actually, they sit for six months. Okay, let me start from the beginning. When, when an individual is hired, uh, they usually have about a six month probation uh, before they become a classified employee in the government of Guam. Sometimes directors have the discretionary of uh, in, you know, extending that to another six months. So you, some people can be sitting there for almost a year um, of probation before they can become a classified employee. What Senator Mary Torres bill does is it basically um, allows an individual who if they falsified or, or um, put something on their application that they had uh, experience on and they really didn't have that experience or basically falsified their application. And if they lay low for about six months, you know, and, and the government doesn't find out, you know, um, then they got a job for life. And, and you can't go after them and fire them or, or send, oh, or null and void his personal action sheet and, and send them away. You can't do that. So it's like we're almost uh, awarding those who can like, you know, hide behind the radar for six months and, mm -hmm. and uh, then you'll get a job. So it, it's just there's a lot of things in it. And the, and the last thing before I let, turn it over to Senator Marsh is um, that it requires now the Civil Service Commission to act as prosecutor, judge and jury um, by uh, putting some of the uh, onus of responsibility of adverse action onto the civil service to the employee when it's a job of the administration or the, the agency head. Right. So there's a lot of issues. Senator Kelly. Right, Kelly? <laughs> Go ahead, Senator yeah, Kelly. So, 
Uh, yeah. So um, I, if if I can, I, I want to take just a minute to talk about the bill that was vetoed because yeah, I, I do. You know, I was looking forward and and I didn't really discuss it very much, but I do have comments about yesterday's session as well. Okay. And so with my bill, it's updating the comprehensive development. Uh, plan for the island. And again, as we're moving forward, the smartest thing that we can do is to be planning for it. And it's the reason why we've had some of the issues we have had is because there hasn't been an updated guideline for it. You know, the comprehensive development plan that we have was done in Ricky Rodalio's time, if that tells you anything, like I was in high school at the time. I don't know about you guys, you're maybe younger than me. Maybe you were in like middle school or elementary school, but that was a really long time ago. And so um, we're grateful that it's been there. We've needed that foundation, but there's been so much that's changed in the world. We understand climate change so much better now. We didn't understand that very well, even just 10 years ago, much less you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And then we have sea level rise. We have all of these principles like indigenous rights and um, environmental justice and social justice and ways we think about the homeless populations and uh, people who have less access to, um, you know, they're, they're just less advantaged um, financially. And so it infused a lot of these principles in there so that as we're moving forward in our plans that um, we're, we're keeping all of those things in mind. And so, you know, it's, uh, I'd like to say that it's really important. Um, it passed unanimously with everybody what that was there, including Senator Tello, and I appreciate her support of it. And um, it was bipartisan because we all recognize that that importance of looking forward in a, a very, very thoughtful way. And I think that that's really gonna help our economy in the long run, right? Um, the economy, but then also one of my favorite sayings is this island or the, the planet, you know, we're just, safeguarding it for our children. It's their inheritance. It's it's theirs, really. And, and we're just uh, taking care of it for this in the short term. And so we really need to think of that generationally. What are we handing over to our, our children, grandchildren, and, and their children? Um, so that was what that bill was all about. And it also recognized the tomorrow special connection to the land, the sea, and the air, because a homeland is a homeland. I had told Chris that I'm actually part Norwegian and I haven't been to Norway, but you know, I feel a special connection to Norway for some reason, just because I know that that's part of my heritage. And, you know, I, ha I know that tomorrows have that special connection here and all of us on the island, as much as we consider it our home, it's the only home I've known, but we have to have that at, at the base of everything that they have that special connection um, that will never, never change really um, to be at the base of things. But for yesterday, so some of what I wanted to point out for yesterday's session is that um, I really appreciated uh, Senator Therese was saying she, uh, and, and myself included, appreciated the intent of the bill. There were, are some issues that CSC needs to have fixed. And this is where it's important that we work together as a body, that we come before the body with what we have as good intentions to fix something. And we think of it, you know, I'm, I'm always of the, the mind that uh, the more heads that are working together, the better served the issue usually is. And so uh, she, Senator Therese is gonna put forward uh, some amendments this morning, but she recognized about three or four elements to the bill that she thought were really strong changes and improvements for this ESC. And then, you know, we as a body had some differing thoughts as to how to tackle some of the other issues that were brought up. So I'm looking forward to those amendments and I'm hoping it will be make it a bill that we all feel comfortable with, which is what has to happen every session. We have right. to get to a point that we either feel comfortable with it and we can support it or we just, you know, it, it's it's not meeting the intent uh, in our eyes or it's, it's not an intent we can support 
and, and then the bill isn't supported. So I hope we get it to that place because CSC does have issues that need to be fixed. Right. Um, so that being said, are you guys planning on an override attempt or anything with the, your bills that were vetoed? Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, troublemaker. Baby. I am, and I, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate you bringing it up to uh, Chris and and Sabrina because um, I need your help. Uh, I need the public's help, and I think a lot of people believed in 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 the bill. Um, like I said, it was forty years ago, uh, making people whole. And and just to reiterate too that, um, like I said, this does not appropriate any money right uh, up front. It still requires the the, the legislature to put funding into the account every year. And in the event uh, there's not enough, then people have to wait. So it, it's to get paid for the next year. So we're not, uh, what is it, jeopardizing any appropriation or, or uh, the general fund at all. It's just making an individual whole. And I'm hoping with the nine, and I'm asking my um, the community out there to please reach out, especially to those nine individuals that are co-sponsors to this bill, um, to stay the course. I mean, what changed your mind? There was nothing justifying to change your mind. The bill is still in the same tack it was. It did not uh, require... Um, additional appropriation. It just allowed the limit of liability to be higher to today's um, cost of living. Right. And then, you know, healthcare and, uh, has gone up tremendously in 40 years. So I'm, I'm asking the support of that. All right, Senator so. Kelly, how about you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I believed in this bill enough and as did other people, like I said, it passed unanimously, unanimously. Yeah, because kind of. I mean, who who doesn't want to develop in a, a sustainable way? Oh, so I guess the governor. I see <laughs> her continued support. Well, you know, I, I think she has been forward thinking. Um, I, I do think I should have done a better job of conveying um, some of these issues. And, and so, um, yeah, I, I, I do think I could have done a better job conveying this, but I, I have seen so much proactivity for sustainability. Uh, maybe maybe I thought I didn't have to uh, provide yeah, <laughs> as well, much information, but there are concerns and um, I want, you know, I want everybody to know that uh, I thought them through over this last year and I reached out to everybody I needed to. I talked to planners, I talked to um, the agencies involved, that it was realistic and um, this made sense. It was something they really, really supported. And yeah. so um, I, I want to convey that to everyone out there that uh, this is realistic. The agencies supported and uh, the planner said that it's feasible. And one of the issues, and, and Senator Tello was one of the ones who had asked about this, and, and it's a valid question, is how are we going to fund these sort of things? And this is where we're very fortunate as a community, because when we talk about sustainability, zero waste, climate change, sea level rise, there's federal funding for these sort of initiatives, especially because we know that we're all contending with this. And that's one of the things. The Bureau of Statistic, uh, Statistics and Plans and the planners who are part of these different sorts of plans, they are securing federal funds. There are two plans going on right now that I'm very excited about. I won't get the names necessarily exactly correct, but um, it's the Seashore System Plan and the Forestry System Plan. Um, I believe we haven't had either of those all of our years of yeah. existence, but we're getting them into place and it's going to safeguard those parts of the environment for us. And, and like I said, for our children and grandchildren. Let me ask you this, Senator Kelly, do, do you think the oh, vetoing yeah. of your bill had any, or even you, Senator Tello, had anything to do with how critical you guys have been of the administration in the last few months? Do you think the gov was like, oh, these two, uh, hmm. well, veto. You know, <laughs> you know I, I have to say, um, you know, to go that far, you know, to make this political by vetoing my bill uh, before an election, um, you know, I, I shrugged to think that that's something she would do just for the sake of politics, you know, to veto my bill. So have I thought about it? Of course I did. Senator Kelly. <laughs> did you do this only because it was political? Of course I thought about it. Right. 
But, um, you know, I just, gosh, that would be terrible. I said to myself, if she just did that. That's all I got to say about that. Senator Kelly, what do you got to say about well, that? Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, I'm of the same mind. And we're, ours weren't the only two bills that were vetoed. There was also another one. And we are part of a, a list of, of others along the way. So um, part of it is, like I said, at least for me, I, I feel like I could have done a better job of explaining the parts of the bill that uh, might have caused concern. But maybe I was a little too enthusiastic, uh, and I know that we're both like-minded in issues of sustainability. And so um, I'm going to put forth that information here and elsewhere and just assure everybody. Yeah, but that, Senator uh, Kelly, I mean, it passed, it passed unanimously. I mean, how much lobbying did you feel you had to do? I feel like it, if it passed and it passed the muster of your all your colleagues and should have been said it right. and forget it right now. Yeah. We got to go. We're against the top of the hour, but it's really good catching up with you two. And now that election's over, we'll start to fold more of uh, you and uh, the senators on, onto the show again, okay? Wait, I, I had a oh, question. Oh, sorry. Oh, hey, Bree. Hey, Bree. Hi. Oh. Yeah. I, I hey, Bree. We haven't got to hear from you. I know. Hey, Bree. Hi. Look at her picture. Look at her picture. <laughs> I, I, this actually doesn't have to do with session, but it was something that um, I wanted to ask Senator uh, Marsh Titano about uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation. I just I was just on the legislature's website, and I understand that you would introduce a bill uh, related to DPR and uh, the director position. Yeah, you know, uh, this director position, it's it's been a, an interesting situation like the whole term. Um, last term, somehow DPR didn't have any oversight. And so that's a concern how that was overlooked. But um, yeah, we can't go back in time. But what we found out is um, there hadn't been a board for about six years. And so if there isn't a board, the, the appointment of the director, it, it only kind of just sits there and it waits for the board to take it to the next level. So what we found out is that now that we have a board, there are actually four steps to this, probably more steps than anybody else in all of the government of Guam. The governor has to appoint, then the board has to approve, then it comes to the legislature, and then I believe the governor has to go back and confirm um, and, and approve the, the legislature's the legislature's approval. And so um, we want to just make it uh, standard with everybody else's and uh, normalize it so it's not these uh, four or more processes, but it, it boils itself down to what other directors go through. And that is still having the legislative oversight, but that the governor doesn't have to bookend it at the beginning and at the end. Hmm. So there's that. And we're also safeguarding their recreational uh, fund just to make sure that nothing is able to be transferred out because we all know the department needs every penny that they can get. Mm -hmm. um, do we have time to ask? Just yeah, yeah. Uh, I, since we do have you on, I just wanted to get a few Actually, updates. I'm sorry, Sabrina. I'm so sorry. We're going to cut off KUAM TV um, because I don't want to have to make you guys feel rushed. We want to get some good answers and good questions in. So we're KUAM FM and Agatnia Guam. To our viewers on KUAM TV, there's a whole bunch of great programming on the way. Uh, or you can jump over here where the action is on the link, The Breeze 93.9. We're on K-Wave News Facebook. We're on the radio. Uh, you know, we're streaming on uh, Docomo Channel 10. It's all over everywhere. Ah! Okay. Uh, my name's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina. <laughs> Thank you, K-U-A-M TV. Esta <laughs> We're back. Uh, you now join us again in progress, an interview with uh, Senators Tello Tidegui, Senator Kelly Marsh, Sabrina Salas Mazzanani. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on some issues with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, I know that uh, something about the restrooms, the parks are open, but the restrooms are closed. Um, is Do you have any update on what's going on there? And also with the pool. Yeah, so uh, two updates with the pool and and this is where um you know those situations of we want uh transparency and accountability but then also government processes can be very slow unfortunately um and i do need to follow up on these uh, some of these different issues i have been thinking about having another informational briefing 
But with the, the pool in Dedido, it's ready to go for repair. We're just waiting for one last step, I understand, from GSA and then that can get underway. And so there um, are several important things that need to happen there. And then for the Hagatnya pool, so the governor has made her decision that um, she's going to be working towards having a new pool, an Olympic size one. The one at Hagatnya actually was a, a quite Olympic size, but uh, to have a fully Olympic sized oh, one that's going to meet the swim meets needs in training for the Olympics and, and otherwise. And uh, that's going to be up there as it was meant to be originally in the first plan for the Dedido complex. It, it was meant to have that pool there. So they are going to move forward with that. Um, Oh, and the restroom, sorry. Uh, so with the restrooms, that is something, and I'm glad you asked me, that I need to follow up on again. Because the last time that I spoke with the director, um, the repairs were all done. They were just waiting for the final inspection um, and I, I believe the, them to be able to give the go-ahead to the, the maintenance contract. So I do need to follow up on that and make sure that those restrooms are open or to find out what the holdup is, because that was a few weeks ago he told me that. And so if there is a holdup, we need to make sure that that holdup issue is uh, it is getting resolved so that it, they can be opened up. They have been repaired. Okay. Yeah, I did, sorry, I just wanted to follow up on that. Yeah, uh, did you also want to ask about the Park Service uh, fines thing that oh. you've been asking about? Right. I don't know if either one of you are aware, and I'm not even sure if this is a new thing. Uh, I was just uh, reading something on um, the District Court of Guam's uh, PACER um, site, and there was an order, I believe, for the National Park Service uh, to implement a fee schedule, fines and fees, for, I guess, violations. Do, you, do any of you know if that's a new thing? or Federal? Federal level? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a federal. federal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let me ask you then, Senator Tello. Are you good, Bree? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask, uh, as the minority leader, obviously we're heading into a new legislature. We've got a bunch of new uh, Republicans, new you know Democrats as well. There are a few, few, a couple. Anyway. New Democrats. <laughs> Uh, are you planning yeah. to uh, try and push to remain the minority leader? Because I'm just hearing there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and I wanted to get uh, as straight from you. Do you do you plan on being the minority leader in the next legislature? Well, uh, first uh, first off, I think every seat that was available um, was um, given to a Republican uh elected Republican candidate. So I'm very happy to have the help. <laughs> very, very happy to have the help. It's been a rough, you know, year as a minority leader, you know. Um, so, well, uh, I can't tell you who that will be because it hasn't been voted on with the caucus uh, or hasn't been released or anything like that. But no, I, I don't plan on uh, running again for a minority leader. I'm going to step down in the 36 and allow somebody else to, to do it. I think uh, um, it's it's only fair to do that. But if, if you remember in the 35th Guam legislature, um, Senator Will Castro was the minority leader at the beginning for one year. And then what we did was we uh, switched that around and had somebody else do it for one year. So I think, um, if anything, we, we brought that to the, the, the caucus, the 36th caucus of Republicans, and let them know that, you know, if anyone's interested after a year, that we can change that leadership, you know, everyone from minority leader to uh, the whip. So um, it's open, but no, I, I'm not going to be seeking uh, the, the minority leader. I, I think I did enough already. I'm, <laughs> I'll uh, let someone take the lead and be happy to follow. Interesting. What's the real reason, though? <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> you tired of getting your bills vetoed? It was, it was really tough. You know, it was. I, I think I held my ground. I think it really is time for somebody else. So, you know, you always have to turn over the rain. And we have a lot of great, I mean, come on, this is, 
we've got a group of uh, Republicans coming in that are well-versed. Um, I think every one of them had had the opportunity to be a minority leader as well. Yeah. So we'd like to give that option to uh, another person, another Republican to, to hold the rein and to, and to lead. Should we anticipate? And be, and we can be good followers. <laughs> should we anticipate a, a crazy power struggle with the Republicans? Because the way I see it, it's like, you know, people talk about the Democrat Party having factions. There are factions in the Republican Party as well. And um, I can see kind of a couple of these factions at play. So are we going to see like, a, you know, how they um, knifed Therese Terlahi out of the speakership in the last uh, legislature? Are we going to see something like that with the Republicans? I, I, you know, anything can happen. That's why it makes your program very exciting. <laughs> it changes. Uh, day to day, you know, I mean, people have to tune in because it, they can say one thing and the next thing something happens, it's it's different, someone changes their mind, you know, mm. somebody has a pet peeve with somebody, which is unfortunate, you know, and, I, and really unfortunate because what really gets me mostly in the legislature is when individual senators um, vote based on, you know, who I'm a friend with or, you know, because this senator, I'm not going to vote for this because this senator, you know, upset me or made me mad, uh, you yeah, know, about yeah, something. Yeah. And and it's, it's very unfortunate when people use their emotions in the legislature um, and not based on the bill and the content content of the the bill that's going to actually help so many people and you get that a lot of times in the legislature and and this is where it becomes causes riff you know if people just stay the course you know senator marsh i i look forward to uh, every time there's a question a bill comes on the floor um there are a couple people in the legislature i know who've done their homework and you can obviously see that because just a couple though the there's only just a couple <laughs> Okay, you 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 can say that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't but, say it. Uh, you said it. <laughs> yeah, and and you can see them coming in with all their books, and and uh, you can yeah. tell by their their questions that they've studied each and every bill. It's not you just study your bill. You know, you have to study everyone's bill that comes on the session floor because then it comes time for you to make an educated guess. I mean, not guess, educated vote on. Uh, how you're going to vote for this bill. And Kelly Marsh has always been that person. You know, I, I look forward to her when she um, asks the questions and you, and obviously she studied the bill, you know, the other person's bill. And I appreciate that. And I'm going to miss my fellow Norwegian, <laughs> by the way. We're, we're both, you know, uh, have Norwegian blood in, in a, you know, with uh, my is Shansky and Kelly, what was yours? Your, Senator Ingelsen. Martin, Ingelsen. see, we got that Norwegian uh, connection here. But, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate, no, I greatly appreciate um, the work that she does on every single bill. And it's important that you make an educated guess on right it. On. I mean, very educated. Yeah, so Senator that's the rift that really happens in the legislature. Yeah, yeah. When you ask us, is there going to be inner fighting? If there's going to be, I mean, there's back and forth all right. the time. Well, what but we like saw I with said, this, this legislature was you had the governor's, um, goons rubber stampers? Um, yeah the rubber stampers who just kind of like did whatever the governor said and that just like caused a divide but you know what i thought was interesting was it made alliances between uh people at crossing party lines you know what i mean so you yep. had the democrats who were like loose as jump they jumped they don't even ask how high and then you had other democrats who questioned things and then they formed alliances with the republicans so i thought it was really interesting um the dynamics that were uh, formed and then you had some like you know senator kelly who uh, some might have said was a rubber stamper, but, you know, I feel like, you know, found her way in the last half of her term. And, you know, I appreciate that. And, you know, and and it is what it is. Might have cost you a couple bills, but, you know. Yeah, but I, I think I think people recognize that with Senator Marsh, that she, she became an independent thinker. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, uh, you know, and I greatly appreciate that. So, um, and, and that's a reflection. I mean, the election in the 36th Guam legislature, I think the people of Guam voted the way they did uh, based on, on that. And, and I think they want to see change. They want to see more of a, a separation of power here and, and have a separate branch of government, you know, and not a, a bunch of individual people rubber stamping. And we're going to see that when we did the vote, when we do the override vote on my bill, we'll see. We'll see if those people are still, Nanga. you know, stamping. Right <laughs> Senator yeah. Kelly, go ahead. 
Last word. I, yeah, I would say for myself, I mean, um, I recognize myself as an independent thinker all along. Right, right. Um, and, you know, I've, I've said before, if you look at my voting record, and I think one of the other things that Senator Tello and I have in common, you know, at the beginning, and I think this, this demonstrates my independent thinking, is... Um, you know, I was known as uh, like the amendment person in the beginning because I really felt like whoever's bill it was, Republican, Democrat, or whatever, if I was going to support it um, or if it was going to go through, I wanted to make it the best it could be, right? And so, you know, we, we've both done a lot of amendments over the term because uh, we we do research and study and and try to improve what's there uh, or catch any small gap. And people do that with my bill as well. One person can only, as much research and, and studying that they put into it, they they uh, they won't necessarily see things that others do. And, and that's, I think, the purpose of the body. Right. But um, gosh, I feel like there was something, oh, you know, I was going to ask, I mean, this is totally off subject, and, and I guess I can ask off the show, but um, for for me, most people think of Norwegians as uh, blonde and straight hair, I guess, but that's not all of Norwegians, obviously. And so my curly hair is actually Norwegian, and I don't know if that's true for Senator Dello, but um, I, I did also want to mention that I, I watched Chris yesterday. Um, there was that fostering a healthy relationship with social media. Oh, and I, I like it. I like conferences like that, and I think it does real good things for the community. And um, I, I appreciated the things that Chris had to say there. And so I thought it was just really good to see him, um, you know, speaking to the community and helping them get through. Social media can be a rough place, as was discussed yesterday, and um, and we need to help our members of the, of the community have tools for getting through some of that because it really impacts some people and, and they do get kind of addicted to it. That was one of the things when I taught classes at the university is, um, you know, after the first 15 minutes of the lecture, you could see that mm -hmm. there was that temptation to start scrolling right, or checking. Right. And, um, and I had to develop a whole sort of method of, politely and kindly um, discouraging that. And I would just stop the lecture and look at them and wait until they were ready to refocus. <laughs> and it seemed to be pretty effective. But I, I did appreciate you doing that, uh, Thank Chris. You. And, and uh, I thought you made very good points. Thank you, Senator Kelly. Yeah, I, I tried to come in a different way of what people are used to and provide a little more insight into just what I think about social media and how it's affected uh, me and you know, ways that people can kind of keep it at, at an arm's length because I think people are just too much in the social media and they tend to forget that there's a whole real world out here. So anyway, but I appreciate your kind words. I'd love for you to go on and on about it, but uh, we're <laughs> we're short of time. So thank you, Senator Kelly. Senator Tello, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank Be you safe. And, uh, thank you, Sabrina. Good to see you. Jason, I know you're back there. Hello. And to the Thanks staff. So there. He's in the corner. Oh, and by <laughs> the way, speaking of social media savvy, Senator, Senator Kelly is really, really good on TikTok. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, 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 ladies, for Norway. Yeah. We're going to get some Viking cuisine in here or something. <laughs> yeah, like raw fish. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Herring, herring. herring, there you go. Oh, yeah. Take care. Okay, good. Uh, good talk, 825.